It's time for the middle entry in the Build-A-Path trilogy. Pee Part Time represents the only Famicom game developed and published by Sanritsu Denki. They're better known as Sims, and they're a small developer that's been hovering around Sega since the 80s. In recent years, they've concentrated almost exclusively on fishing games. The title Pee Part Time refers to... Um... You know, I don't actually know. It's not in the manual. The main character is Pallet, a robot whose sole goal is to walk straight on a path. If Pallet reaches a T-junction, then they'll turn left. Otherwise, they keep going until they bump into a wall and have to turn around, run into an enemy, fall into some water, or reach the exit tent after collecting a key. You're controlling a cursor, and if you hit the A button, then the tile that you have selected will swap places with a blank spot that has been left in the map. And then you select another tile which will drop into the new blank spot you left behind, and so on. But it's a little more complicated than that. You can only swap blue tiles into that spot. Pink tiles can't move at all. And of course the tile has to be unoccupied as well. When Palette walks on a pink tile it turns blue, and when they walk on a blue tile it turns pink. Also, crossing a tile costs Pallet one unit of oil, so there's a time limit on getting them to the exit. So what you're doing on every stage is flipping tiles around, trying to build a path that will let Pallet reach the key, and then get to that tent. The biggest threat that you'll have is screwing up the path and having Pallet drop into the water. But there's also enemies that wander the level. The most common ones are these Moke Moke. They stick to the road, and you'll often have to manipulate the path so that they wind up trapped. Fluffy here, and that is the name from the manual, does a random walk wherever it wants regardless of tiles. That does become a problem on some stages where the only possible path to reach the exit goes through one square, and I've had Fluffy settle in there for a while. Mogglers are these moles that just pop out of the ground at random. And those are the three kinds of enemies that are found on all 50 levels. Also on the path are oil cans that will give Pallet a bit more oil for getting around, and piles of gold that just add to your score. You have three lives, and there are no continues, but after every five stages, you get a cutscene that takes about 30 or 40 seconds to play out. If you sit there and watch the entire thing, then you get a password. And that's it. That's everything there is in Peepar Time. Something that I found annoying is that there's water tiles everywhere that are not part of the level. What I mean by that is there's always one water tile that you can swap a tile to, but there's a lot of other water that looks identical to the tile that you're swapping around. It can make it difficult to know what the actual shape of the level is. Another problem that I had is that there's two kinds of levels in Peepar Time. The trivially easy, where you just make a path and instantly win, and the annoying ones where you have a few moments right at the start of the level to make a change in order to prevent Pallet from dying. Occasionally there's a third kind of level where you have to go away from the circus tent and then double back, but that's usually an easy stage where you just have to recognize that you can't take the shortest path. In my hour of play, I made it to the 30th stage of Peepar Time, so this wasn't a complicated game. Unfortunately, the further you get into the game, the more that the stages are packed with randomly moving enemies, which reduce clearing the stages to just raw luck. In Japan, nobody remembers Peepar Time. In fact, it's a little bit of a rare game, although so undesirable, you'll only spend about 3,000 yen for a copy. For my own experience, well, I like the concept. I think it put just enough spin on path building to make it a challenge especially with how you can only switch out tiles if they're the correct color. Unfortunately, once you learn how the game works, which only takes four or five levels, you'll find everything reduced to a pretty simple pattern. Lock up pallet so you can work, lock up the enemies so that they can't get to pallet, and then make your path. Maybe if they made the paths a little bit more challenging to create, gave the game a bit more visual flair, and added a few other different kinds of challenges, this one could have been good. But as it stands, it feels like a tech demo made at a game jam rather than a full game. 